Hello all, this video is about the topic Axial Chirality and it is meant for the first semester MSc students who have a background knowledge on chiral centers, their designation using CIP notation, about diastereomers and enantiomers. Before going into the topic of Axial Chirality, let me show you a paper which was published in 1986 in the Journal of Chemical Ecology entitled as Sex Specific Activity of RNS17 Dioxospiro 55 Undecane, which is the major pheromone of Dacus olea. This compound, also called oleane, is a major component of the female sex attractant pheromone blend of the olive fruit fly Dacus olea. The response of male and female to pure R and S enantiomers was tested under laboratory and field conditions. Males in laboratory and field tests responded only to R oleane, which functions as a sex attractant, whereas females responded only to S oleane in laboratory test. So this is the R oleane which attracts the male olive flies and this is the S oleane which attracts the female olive flies and they are enantiomers to each other and enantiomers have very different properties. Now, the chirality in this molecule is not due to any center. It is due to the axis shown here, which is passing through this spirocarbon. The simplest example of a molecule showing a chiral axis is the allene molecule. Allene molecule is the first member of compounds having cumulative double bonds. That means double bonds uh, close to each other. In the allene molecule, the center carbon is sp hybridized, whereas the terminal carbons are sp2 hybridized. The ball and stick model of the allene molecule is shown here, where the two double bonds are perpendicular to each other. If you put the allene molecule into a rectangular cube of this sort, you can see that the red markings here show the carbon atoms and the blue shows the hydrogen atoms present in uh, which is placed in the vertices as shown here. So I hope you understood the geometry of the allene molecule where one double bond is perpendicular to the other double bond. So when you have all hydrogen atoms, this is on constant rotation, you don't have any chirality. But once you replace one of these or two, two of these with uh, substituents other than hydrogen, then you have chirality creeping in because of the axis of the allene molecule. So you, here you can see the chiral axis where you have this R and H group in the plane of this uh, paper whereas this R group is pointing towards out of the plane and this pointing H is pointing at the back of the plane. So this is a chiral alley. Now it is not that all cumulative molecules are chiral. For example butatriene which is also called cumuline is a molecule which has three double bonds. Now in this case what happens you have this R and H as well as this H and R lying in the same plane. So instead of optical isomerism, they exhibit geometrical isomerism just like the alkenes. So generally we can say when an even number of cumulative double bonds, the different groups on terminal carbon atoms will exhibit optical isomerism and when you have an odd number of cumulative double bonds with two different groups and terminal carbon, they exhibit geometrical isomerism. Now, having known the geometry of the allene molecule and how the chirality creeps in here, now let us see how to give the no CIP notation for this molecule. So, to uh, assign RS notation, we have to view the molecule. For example, this is the 2 3 pentadiene molecule, it is an allene, dimethyl substituted allene. So, you view it through this end. So, when you view it through this end, you are already fixing the priority and you are trying to project it on a surface. So when you view here, you will get on top, you can see the methyl group, bottom you can see the hydrogen. Right side you will see the methyl and left side you will see the H. So out of this you have 1 here and 2 here and out of this you have this is 1 prime and this is 2 prime. So our rotation is from 1 to 2 to 1 prime, that is an anti-clockwise rotation, so you give the notation S. This is another example, so if you project it on a surface, you know that on top you will have the methyl, bottom you will have the ethyl. And ethyl gets higher priority than methyl and right side you have ethyl so it is 1 to 2 to 1 prime it is a clockwise rotation you get R. And 
another example shows you that you project it on a surface you have the phenyl group on the if you're viewing it from this side phenyl group is on top h is on down and right side you have co2 et so one to two to uh, so one prime you get anti-clockwise rotation and the rotation is s now let's go to another molecule which is the biphenyl molecule and in case of biphenyl the isomerism is called atrop isomerism arising from the greek word greek word a which is not and tropos to turn so that means there is no turning that means there is restriction so the term of atrop isomerism refers to the restricted rotation about the single bond in a biphenyl molecule which makes its property similar to that of the allene molecule so when you have substituents in this sort in a biphenyl molecule the rotation about the single bond gets restricted and now we have one phenyl ring perpendicular to the other phenyl ring so as a result you can see that if you try to project it on a surface the co2h comes on the top no2 comes below right side when you view from here right side you have no2 and left side you have co2h so the rotation is from 1 to 2 to 1 prime clockwise rotation you get the r notation then the question is, are all biphenyls prone to atropisomerism? The answer is no. For example, this is diphenic acid where you have CO2H in all trans sort of orientation. So here, because of the particular geometry of the molecule, this uh, attains a plane, this becomes in a plane. Okay, the phenyl rings come in a plane and there is no atropisomerism. And in the case of, but in the case of sulfonic acid where you have a bulky sulfonyl group on both ends, now there is restricted rotation and you can resolve the isomers. In diphenic acid, when you have substituents in the ortho positions, again you see that it becomes optically active. But if you put a ring which is closing this biphenyl molecule in this sort, again this comes in a plane, makes it optically inactive. So you have to be very careful to de designate or to choose or to decide whether these are atropisomers or not. So this is an example of a glycopeptide antibiotic called vancomycin which is used against the bacterial infections caused by Staphylococcus aureus. Here you can see a number of chiral centers as well as an axially chiral unit, which is a biphenyl. And in 2002 organic letters, a troposelective synthesis was uh, suggested for this AB ring. So it is not only the chirals and biphenyls which are axially chiral, there are a number of other molecules. For example, one of this is alkylidine cycloalkane. So this is an alkylidine cycloalkane. So if you view it from this side, you have the, fixing the priority. So you get the first priority for the middle, second for the H, and top you have CO2H. So 1, 2, 2 to 1 prime, clockwise rotation R. This is spirine molecule, view from this side, first priority goes to CO2H, right side, and H on the left side. So 1, 2, 2, 2, uh, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 1 prime, where the, because the CO2H is down, you have an anti-clockwise rotation, so the rotation is S. Third example is a cyclohexanone oxine. You have a chiral axis passing through this side. You view it the molecule from this side. Right side you have Me. You give the first priority there. Second priority to the left side. And third priority to H1 to 2 to 1 prime. You have clockwise rotation R. The fourth example is a catenane molecule. It is an interlocked molecule where you have the NH. You view from this side. You have the CO on uh, down and NH on top. So NH gets a first priority. So and the right side you have CO and left side you have NH. So it is NH to CO to NH. So you have a clockwise rotation. The notation is R. This is a substituted adamantane molecule. So here again you can view it from this side. So CO2H comes on top and H comes below. Right side you have CO2H. So you have 1 to 2 to 1 prime anticlockwise S. This is a similar spiroketone. The enantiomers of the spiroketone are shown here, R form and S form. And this is actually uh, some, it's not, it's by naphthyl molecule containing carbazole units. So you can have systems of this sort also, which is actually chiral. So uh, with that, let me thank you. So it is very important, axial chirality is very important because you know the, you are very aware of the BINAP molecules binap and binol so these molecules are uh, actually phosphorus ligands okay which can show this type of uh, isomerism important okay so i got you got an idea about axial chirality thank you